Stratica Tavarishi, and welcome to a new segment that we're going to do. For a long time, I've been struggling with finding ways to increase the variety of games that I get to talk about on my channel without necessarily decreasing the amount of content. And what I settled on is an experiment that we're going to do today, and if it works out, it's something that we're going to continue doing, and that is a segment called Why You Should Play. And it's going to be a 15 to 20 minute extended gameplay look at a game with commentary about me talking about it, what I like about the game, and uh, maybe what I don't like about the game, and you know, so on and so forth. And while this isn't necessarily going to be a review because I'm not going to stamp some score uh, at the end, I'll it's think of it more as a recommendation. And if you happen to like the genre or style of game uh, that we're looking at, then it's a recommendation that you should check it out. And maybe I'll do like a why you should not play if, you know, there's reasons why you should not play a, a certain game. But let's keep it positive for now. And I mainly want these to focus in on indie games because uh, I think indie games are the future, I guess. And if you're George Bush, indie games is the future. And I've been trying for a long time to find more ways to uh, throw the meager amount of publicity that I can towards games that I uh, think deserve it I don't necessarily don't necessarily want to do games that have large marketing budgets already because they don't need help from youtubers and commentators and that type of stuff but I want to focus more on on games that don't necessarily have those resources so today the first game we're going to talk about ever and what you and why you should play is the banner saga also do want to say we are going to have a little surprise at the end of this video so what the the Banner Saga is, is a tactical turn-based RPG, and it's mixing in some other elements from other games that create quite an interesting and engaging recipe. And I got this game a couple days ago, and I've just been really immersed with it ever since I've, I've really fallen in love with it. So let's load up where uh, we are. And uh, so basically, this game takes place in a sort of very Scandinavian Viking-esque world where there are two races right now, two sentient races. There's the humans, and then there's the Varl, which are, as you can see, kind of one of them there, are these uh, giant sort of, you know, sentient creatures that are about twice the size of a human, and they have horns sticking out of their head. And there's also a kind of another race threatening the existence of this world called the Drudge. And they're really your main sort of enemies in the game. So right now, um, without spoiling too much in the story, we're on the run from the Drudge. They've overwhelmed a town in which we lived and we're trying to escape their clutches. So we're in a rest segment right now and we can take the time to kind of look about this town and see what uh, see what's going on we can go to the market if we want to buy stuff we can buy stuff so and we can go to uh, the map which is interesting because it shows to us the world map in, in this uh, fantasy realm and also it's it's a good way to really learn kind of the history because there's you can tell there's already a lot of backstory that the developers have put into the game so we can see we can click on this province, Sunterland. They had such a hot they had such high hopes for Sunterland. The new kingdom of Men and Varl is what they called it. Rounding up anyone who yearned for a land of their own, whose clans and families took the caravans and banners to the untamed frontier. Then the Nordfeleg disappeared and the trees withered beneath Arctic winds and the crops would not grow. Well, I guess it sucks to be the settlers in the frontier. But anyway, you can uh, click on all the various landmarks and see how things are going in here. This is our inventory screen where we get to look at our heroes, which are following us. And I believe I can level up some of them. Yes, I can. And Renowned is kind of like your currency and experience. It's what you get for slaying foes in battle. So we can't upgrade this guy. We can promote this guy. 
and uh, well, you too. And that's it. Oops. Well, and of course we can uh, distribute some points towards uh, various attributes. Actually, I'm gonna. around the screen we also have uh, an area where we can rest which well, probably wasn't the best idea for me to do right now because what resting does is it increases the morale of your caravan and we'll talk about caravans in a second but it also uses up your food supplies so there's a definitely sort of a, a trade-off system there so let's leave and we go to the caravan mode which is kind of like this weird version of Oregon Trail where you see the settlers we are we're leading out of the town and we're having to cross the the plains to get to another town where we can in turn buy food and we can hang out and we can you know continue the storyline but along the way we're confronted with various events that uh, need to be resolved so Right now it says, you're just outside the village whose two men in red approach. My name is Hogan, says one, gesturing to the other. This is my brother, Mogan. Many of us from the village wish to join your Frostavel. A third man, exuding rain, charges up and says, shut your mouth, Hogan, he screams. And I guess this is, oh no, it's not a battle, it's a conversation. But uh, one of the striking things about this game is the art style, which is just absolutely beautiful. And the animation, uh, when you get into the battles, and even sort of the, the caravans, is, is beautiful as well. And there's also animated cutscenes on top of all of that. So that's another just absolutely striking feature about the game. What's going on? Those bastards don't speak for us. They're trying to divide the village since you got here. True, you can keep what it, you can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will go with reasonable people of uh, sewer Scorg. I'll have you both gutted before I let half the village desert. Behind the angry villager, a mob of armed thugs have appeared, with all furrowed brows and nervous stares. You both know what will happen to the rest of us if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. You both know what will happen. Oh, okay, sorry. That's just a repeat of what he said. Anyway, at this point, I've got the option to intervene, and I can, you know, choose any one of these various choices, and that is going to have consequences. And those consequences can be good, they can be bad, they can be somewhere in the middle. You have no way of really knowing what action is going to lead to what outcome. So there won't be anything to tend to once the judge arrive. Let your people decide on your own. I don't want anything to do with this. Say nothing. I'm going to say number one. Drudge my ass. I don't know what this scam is this time, Hogan, but you've got two choices. Back to work, or I'm finally putting you in the ground. Morgan, what do you say? I... Though it was unfair, he only asked me. Morgan draws his axe slowly, followed by Hogan. Despite their confidence, the brothers are significantly outnumbered. I think I make a poor farmer. Um... So I've got choices I can either say, fuck you guys, I can side with the town leader, or I can say, let's make this a fair fight. I'm going to side with the brothers because they look like they're good warriors. Ivor step forwards. The, hug th the hugs th hesitate as they pull your axe. You'll notice that Alette is nowhere to be seen. So we're in a battle now. So we'll talk about the circumstances so this is the turn order that we get to choose for our, uh, our troops so I say okay that's good and then uh, sooner or later we'll get to the battle and one of the reasons why I ended up finding out this game is because someone told me it said hey this game you'll like this game it's like XCOM. And, uh, so that instantly got me intrigued. 
So I can choose how I want to deploy my men. And then we'll hit ready. And this guy, his name is Ivor, and he's a Varl. See, as you can see, he's much bigger than the rest of the humans here. So in a turn, uh, we can of course move him. And I've got the option to attack or use a special move. So I'm going to attack this archer, and I'm going to have enough strength to kill her. So there's two attributes that really play off each other in this game and create a really interesting dynamic. Um, you've got armor, which is the blue segment, and then you've got strength slash hit points in the red segment. So usually what the tactic is, is you try and whittle away at an enemy's armor, thus exposing them to uh, more powerful hits, more uh, yeah, more powerful strength attacks that actually whittle away their HP. Once someone's HP reaches zero, they die. Um, if someone's armor reaches zero, they don't die. And if they have zero HP and six armor, they're still going to die. You know, they're just a corpse with a lot of armor on it. So there's kind of a tactic of you decide, well, am I going to break this person's armor and um, risk the chance that they'll be able to hit me hard the next turn? Or am I going to whittle away their strength slash HP? And that's another interesting dynamic because strength and HP uh, are the exact same. So this archer right now has 7 strength and 7 HP. And as she gets injured, her strength is going to go down. Meaning she can't, uh, her attacks will have less hurting power. So that's kind of one of, one of the reasons why if you get the opportunity to uh, hit someone hard, uh, while well, they still have a lot of armor, you should take it as well. Ivor is a very powerful, powerful dude. So there you go, his attack took three hit points away from uh, this dude. And that means that he has less attack power now. That his next attack is going to do less damage. So, Eagle is uh, the current character we're controlling. He doesn't have as much strength as Ivor, who is a giant guy who is twice the size of anybody else. So he can't hit as hard. Therefore, I'm going to strike at this guy's armor, which will do, which will whittle away. Hopefully, after enough armor hits, it'll have an opportunity for someone else to come in and uh, deliver the killing blow. There's also another factor here called willpower. And what willpower does, it allows you to do certain things like move farther in a match or do more damage with a strike and every character has a certain amount of willpower and it's regenerated by using uh, this horn which increases with the amount of enemies you kill or they can rest for a turn so I can use one willpower and do two damage to his armor instead of the one I normally could so these guys are really taking it to him So, and he's got a, an attack, which uh, four attacks at one strength or one armor each. Last hit adds plus one for each adjacent ally. So let's just do that just for demonstration's sake. And you can see I did a decent amount of damage. So this guy, he's, he's not doing the best. And I can either leave him to stand his ground and he'll probably, almost certainly, actually, almost certainly be... Uh, overwhelmed, or uh, I can try and retreat him and, and have these enemies attack other people and bring him towards my allies. So it's a difficult choice. The one nice thing that where this differs from XCOM is that if uh, someone dies in battle, they're not entirely dead. They're, they need some time to recuperate and recover and they'll be back. All they can really do is... So he's going to die, so I'll just try and use as much willpower as I can to really hammer these guys. I'm going to have him stand his ground. So they did a special move. And, uh... That hurt me slightly. Alright, so this is one of our archers who, as you can imagine, has a decent, uh... attack at range. So he's also very powerful too, so he can do 5 damage to this guy, which will de greatly decrease his strength 
and leave him in a position where he can be attacked and hopefully killed. Also, during his turn, he's going to do much less damage. So, the question is, where am I going to do with her? So this guy's at one hit point now. He's like, said almost certainly gonna die. Yeah, well, he's got nothing he can do. He's gonna have to end it just in the turn. And there he goes. But uh, it had to happen. So one of the things is. Uh, all, your turns alternate, so it's an enemy turn, your turn, enemy turn, your turn, regardless of how many people you have. So, it's not always to your advantage to kill people, because that just gives their strong, uh, their strongest units better chance of, uh, or gives them more turns to attack you. So he's only at one hit point, and I'm just going to leave him there because during his turn, he's not going to be able to do a whole lot. But I can definitely weaken this guy over here. So there's a lot of variables in this combat system to consider. Use some willpower and bring down his armor a little bit. I'm pretty sure this guy's the leader. He's got the most hit points. All right, so now I'm in a position where I can do some real damage with uh, Ivor here. He, he pretty much, at this point in the game, he just pretty much kills everybody, so he's pretty badass. Alright, we may as well take out this guy. Oh, wait, I can't even... Why doesn't even have enough? Well, he can finish him off with some willpower. So they're really trying to take it out on poor uh, Ivor here. He's almost out of armor. But again, most of the guys around here don't have enough hit points to really damage him. So let's take him out. See if I can take her out. We've pretty much got this on lockdown. Ooh, ouch! All right, I better beware. Shit like that. I didn't know she'd be able to do so much damage. I thought we damaged her enough. I'm gonna take her out. That guy can only do one damage. No! Man, I should take him out. That's shitty. Anyway, we managed to claim victory. We lost a couple guys, but they'll be back. And uh, the caravan continues, and we learn the outcome of uh, our battle. And uh, 
one of the brothers says. So the brothers thank you with wide grins. Soon many of the villagers have joined your caravan. You scan anxiously for Alette, who's your daughter, who seems to have gone missing when the fighting began. Eventually you find her watching from afar. Hogan returns at that moment, introducing you to his wife and son. Soon you set out again. So from that, we managed to gain a bunch of uh, fighters and renown and supplies. So that was a good move. That was the right move, I guess. Alette marches quietly alongside the caravan. A little distance since leaving the village. When you stop to rest, Oddleaf appears and approaches you both. Alette, I have something for you. Oddleaf gathered up the long banner from the caravan and smiles warmly as she passes it to Alette. What's this about? I was hoping you'd sew the banner with everything that has happened since we left Skorg. Find me another time, Rook, and we'll talk. Before you can comment, she departs. Dad, are you the chieftain now? Looks that way. Oh, that means... You're both quiet for a moment. I'll let unfurls her banner. Alif has been teaching me how to sew. She speaks pretty highly of you. Can we read the part about Mom? You nod. On the banner has sewn the story of, fa the story of families who've lived in Skorg throughout the years, just as is done on every banner in town. I wish she were here, but I'm kind of glad she isn't. The section of the banner about your family is short, but Alette has been sewing it in colorful designs. Why do you say that? She doesn't have to deal with all of this. Drudge, leaving home, and... Why did you kill those men in the village? I mean, if it's okay to ask... I had to make a hard choice. Because the dredge are terrifying. Every time we fight them, I just want to run, but... I don't want to kill a person, please. Are you mad at me? You might have to someday. I guess I'd do it if I really had to. But why do we have to? I know what you mean. Yeah, I know, Dad. You're doing a good... I think you're doing a good job. She hugs you. You spend the rest of the time together, sewing a new version of the banner. For better or for worse, the story of Skorg is your burden now. So... That, uh, we're going to play it, now we're resting again, and I think that probably brings us to the end of what I really wanted to show you with this game. We got some battle, we got the caravan, a little bit of the caravan, but just think of it, it's it's a lot like Oregon Trail, I guess, and you're just riding along in your caravan, but, uh, and, and you're faced with choices, you can't really do things like hunting and people don't randomly die of dysentery, but uh, you are kind of faced with those choices and you, you don't really know what the outcome of such choices is going to be, which really makes uh, every choice meaningful and, and powerful. So, with that, I think this brings us to the end of uh, our first uh, Why You Should Play, and Why You Should Play uh, the Banner Saga is because it's an uh, excellent and beautiful tactical uh, RPG game. It's challenging, and uh, the music's great, the characters are great, the world's great, and uh, if you're at all a fan of like XCOM or you know Fire Emblem or games like that those kind of turn-based RPGs then I think this is definitely a game you should check out so before we go I want to talk about my surprise that I had and that is that I'm giving away a copy of this game uh, to one lucky viewer and the way you're going to win a copy is what you're going to do is you're going to write me a minimum 150 word paragraph as to why you think you deserve this game, and email it to me. Uh, and my email is comradestalin1 at gmail.com. I'll make sure it's in the description. The paragraph can be as long as you want it to be, uh, but the minimum is 150 words, and I will put it through word uh, word document to make sure that you're above the limit. So if you want to, if you want a copy of the Banner Saga. Email me why you think you deserve it in 150 words or more, and uh, I will choose uh, the winner and email them a copy of the game. So, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. This has been the Stalinator signing off for now, and I hope you enjoyed this segment, and hopefully we'll do more as time goes on. Until that time, you guys take care. <laughs>